Now, before we do any of this, we have to realize that there's something that's a little bit lacking in what we've done so far. So let's go back to our equation. The key thing we haven't talked much about is what happens to the wedge here. Um, and it turns out that what happens to our wedge is going to be uh, really fundamental to understanding what happens um, in the labor market over the business cycle. So, so far, you know, we've just taken the wedge as uh, given as a parameter. So we've assumed that firms and workers, uh, when they meet, they just agree on a wedge and that wedge is just fixed. Um, but before we go further, we need to think a little bit more about what that wedge could be. So, in matching models, um, how is a wedge set? In what context uh, does a wedge uh, come about? Well, you know, firms are going to post um, vacancies. They are going to uh, attract workers. And at some point, they'll pick an unemployed worker that they think is a good fit. And once they do that, the worker and the firm, they have to agree on a wage. So it could be that the worker says, I want that wage, and the firm says, yes. It could be that the firm says, look, is how much we pay for that job. And the worker is going to say, yes. It could be that there is some bargaining over the wage. You know, workers and firms um, try to come to an agreement. It could be, you know, like many, many things could be going on. But the key thing is that um, this wage is really specific to each employment relationship. You know, the fact that other people on the labor market are paid other wages is not really relevant because you know people can be paid whatever. Once this specific job comes to meet these specific workers, they have to agree on a wage now. The fact that other guys in other firms are paid something, uh, even for a similar job or for similar experience, it doesn't really have any um, impact on what that current wage is. Each firm worker relationship is free to agree on on a wage, um, you know, at least in theory. Uh, there is no, you know, here we are not in a perfectly competitive market where if you make me an offer and I don't like your offer, I can quote you know, a higher wage, quote a, low, a lower wage and attract other, uh, you know, firms or workers here. It's not like that. To find somebody, if you're a worker to find a job, if you're a firm to find a worker, you need to go through that complicated matching process and at the end of the matching process you just have one worker facing one firm and they have to agree on the wage and you know if one of the two parties is not happy they have to keep on uh, you know maybe bargaining over the wage or they have to figure out a way to agree on the wage because just uh, going to somebody else is not an option you know for a firm if you wanted to go to somebody else it means that you would have to lose that worker you have to repost a vacancy you have to re-spend really time and effort, uh, effort to um, find a new worker. So it's doable, but it has a big cost. For the worker, it's exactly the same. If you don't like the wage that's offered to you, you could just say, okay, I'm not interested. Then you have to go back to the pool of unemployment. You have to re-wait for vacancies. You have to re-go through the application process. You have to re-interview with a new firm and then go back you know, into um, the bargaining room and, and try to agree on the wage. So that's a key insight from these types of models that Wages are specific to a relationship between a firm and a worker. And furthermore, there is a cost, a sum cost for workers and for firms once they come and meet and try to bargain on a wage. So it would mean a lot of time wasted if either the firm or the worker decided to stop this negotiation and go and try to get a new wage. And that's very so this has you know, there's a technical work for that. We we, are, we we'll say that when we bilateral monopoly situation. Just because both parties, worker and firms, they have some, in a sense, monopoly power or bargaining power. Just because as a worker, you have some bargaining power because you know that for the firm, it's costly to leave the negotiation table and go find a new worker. As a firm, you have some bargaining power, some monopoly power, because you know that it's costly for the worker to leave um, the negotiation table and try to go find a new firm. So we mean that bilateral monopoly situation. So it means that a broad range of things can happen. Basically, there are many ways in which a wage can be determined. In fact, there's not a, yeah, there are many ways in which a wage can be determined in that situation just because uh, both parties have bargaining power. Um, so that means that actually that wage W, there are many ways, uh, there are many forms that the wage can take actually. Um, 
Okay? And the other thing that's important, so one is this idea of um, bilateral monopoly, the other one is the idea that the wage is specific to a relationship. The fact that you were paid something before has no impact what you will, on what you will be paid now. The fact that a firm paid somebody something before, maybe for the same job, has no impact on what you're paid now because you're starting a new relationship. The fact that other people are paid something different or the same has no impact on that way.